I'm mindful not to predict impending doom. I'm also, it's not really within my, my particular nature to start getting annoyed about something before it's happened because, I mean, in West Ham terms, we got some recent lessons in this and particularly when we do hammers chat eggs, we do videos and there's lots of comments always lots of comments so i'll take you back to david moyes getting a job for a second time around and then lockdown happens first coronavirus hit lockdown happens and lots of people were saying well that's it we're gonna go down and, and we didn't we didn't go down at all we actually lockdown was lifted yeah that's the word isn't it lockdown was lifted and we actually had a really good run in between and, and the end of the season uh, and, and then at the end of the season what happened was a lot was made of it you know being luck we we were just well prepared other teams weren't well prepared so going into the season I, I do remember it I remember doing the season's predictions I remember a lot of comments it's the last season you know the one where we've just finished six sort of thing and people were saying well look at us we were almost relegated last season we've got another season of impending doom and lots of people were predicting terrible things and actually, you know, we had a remarkably good season, didn't we? And I certainly remember individual signings as well. We've spoken recently about Dawson, you know, and there was this massive, we were after Tarkowski, we were after Fafana, uh, who else was there? Teletazar, there were two or three, weren't there? And we didn't get any of those. We ended up with Craig Dawson and everyone was saying, well, this is terrible, it's a terrible signing. Someone got relegated to Watford and I think he'd been relegated with West Brom before, quite possibly. And again, there were, it was impending doom again. And he turned out, you know, pretty damn good, didn't he, really? <laughs> I wasn't thrilled about the signing myself. I'm not saying I was, um, I was, I was uh, overly different on, on a lot of these. And then the Lingard one, I remember, remember being sat with Gio doing a live video um, and, and discussing it. I think we did a phone in, we did a phone in, that's what happened. And then, you know, people weren't impressed with Lingard coming in. And I certainly remember sitting there myself saying, I don't understand why we need another attacking midfielder. And, and again, it's sort of for all, <laughs> for all our moans, it turned out all right. Well, it turned out better than all right. It turned out to be... Well, you've got to say Lingard for that six-month period, one of the best signings we've ever made. I, I really do. I think it's fair to say that. So we, we, we get to this next part of the season and, and there's messages of impending doom again, a season of struggle. We're not going to buy anyone and, and all this sort of thing, OK? So I am mindful, just given the context of what I just said, that I don't, I'm not going to start reacting to something that hasn't happened yet. I, I am fully aware that we could sign some players and we could have a decent season. In fact, I would, I would suggest that is more than likely than us signing no players and having a crap season. That's my disclaimer before me saying what I'm about to say because there is a however. And the however is this article which was written by Dave Langton in Current View, which has got a massive response on there. And it's about it's about West Ham dithering and losing out on a striker. Um anyway, it, it, here, here, here it is. Let me let me I'll pop the I'll pop the start the article's up there. I will read the article to you if you haven't read it. It basically says West Ham have missed out on a deal to sign uh, Roman Uremchuk this summer. You remember this guy. This guy was uh, Yarmolenko's partner. Said the Irons were linked from a potential move to sign the Ukrainian international from Ghent this summer as David Moyes looks to strengthen. Instead, he has moved to Benfica in Portugal for £14.5 million pounds sterling. But as a website or a news source in Belgium that's claimed that West Ham were major candidates to sign him until the deal was stalled. It says the Irons were, in, were said to be interested in a move and commenced talks with Ghent, saying we, we West Ham, had talks with Ghent over a deal, but we hesitated. It allowed Benfica to swoop in and make a bid that matched Ghent's asking price, and the, it's it's got done. The, the, anyway, it then goes on to say uh, say about Uremchuk and it, how he did in the Euros. Uh, and it, the, the article, Dave's article, says the Irons remain in the market for a striker, but we'll have to find a new target in the next few weeks. Um, I mean, pick pick the bones out of that, if you will. Um, first of all, it, I, it's not a good read. And again, I want to get another disclaimer out, out there, really. We've been linked with Uremchuk for quite a while now. Well, since the Euros, since he started playing well in the Euros. Um, I wasn't overly impressed, I've got to be honest with you. 
Um, he didn't. He didn't strike me as somebody that was that was suited to the way West Ham are playing under David Moyes. However, however, uh, there's two things which I think lend a little bit of credence to this to this story. Number one is that it's not been leaked from our end. It's come from a Belgium news source. And number two is the fact that Dave's run with it on on Claret and Hugh. I it's I mean it doesn't actually shed. Well, it does, whoever's doing the negotiating, I don't know what the situation is with the new director of football. Is he in place? Is, is Sullivan doing the negotiating? I don't know. Are we? What are we saying? Is it? Is it the Diver and Dave thing? I'm not. I'm not sure where the blame is meant to be apportioned here. I'm not even sure how much I. But I believe it. But this is starting to become a bit of a pattern now. And as I say, what I I'm just look, I think Dave's just reporting on on a story that he's turfed up here and, and I'm doing the same on a story that I've read that Dave's reported on something else. Um, however, the more you hear, the more you worry. And the fact that it says we've divvered, we've delayed and we've stalled and it allowed Benfica to come in and just match the asking price. So just for a second, let me just put aside the fact I don't think this is the right player for us. So I'm not sad about us losing out on this player. This is about us not getting players which we're targeting. So whether I think he's a good player for West Ham or not is by the by. What's important is whether David Moyes thinks he's a good player for West Ham. Uh, that, that's all that, all that matters, really. I, I think it's, I think we dodged a bit of a bullet on this one, really. However... What if this is happening? What if we are we have tried to negotiate for a player? We've we've bid low, we've kept on bidding low, and whilst we were stalling and hesitating, Benfica have come in and said, "Oh, we'll have him. Thank you very much." Well, that ain't good, again, is it? I mean, let's be perfectly honest. And and as I say, I, I'm not I'm, I'm not overly bothered about this, but at some point, if it's true. It, maybe it becomes a player that you are bothered about. Maybe it becomes someone that is important. Do I think that uh, Yeremchuk is is make or break? And no, to West Ham season, no, I don't. And actually, this goes against what I think anyway. I think we bring a striker and we've got to bring somebody that, that's so good. He almost gives more as a tough decision and pushes uh, Mikel Antonio to the bench. I don't think this guy puts the Antonio Antonio to the bench. I, I really don't. This is not... That guy, but it is a worry, and you get to the point where there's no smoke without fire, a little bit. And what it does is uh, there's a certain amount of of leeway. I, I thought there was a certain amount with the ownership because of COVID, because of lack of fans, and I don't mean fans' influence on the team. I mean because of protests and things like that. I mean, I thought he was almost given what do they call it in Americans a timeout. I think almost the board had a timeout. And it was it was an opportunity to get the house in order. And really, I would expect them to know a little bit, to be a little bit wiser, to think, OK, we've had a bit of a lucky break here. We've got to make sure that next time the transfer window comes round, we're, we're bang on it and we get our deals done nice and early. And I think we will do deals and I think we will get deals done, which is why I'm not going bonkers about this now but I'll tell you something if we get to the end of the transfer window and we've not signed anyone then 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 I certainly will you know I'll, I'll react I'll react then I'm mindful bearing in mind what I said at the start of the video about doing some rant about not signing any players that get to the you know we get to in in two weeks time we've signed three players and and you know and some of them are quite good or they're all quite good and you'd start looking a bit silly so look transfer window is a transfer window and I don't think there's a, a, a ton of business been done yet but it is it is a worry it, it definitely is a worry on all that and also the weird thing is it was only this evening so what is this Monday it's Monday evening now as I record this I'll put I'll, I'll do two videos today I'll do this one um so just it's just just the only thing about this subject and I'll do the play and stuff later on I'll, I'll put it up later this afternoon um actually I've heard tonight and somebody said to me not I don't it wasn't even off the back of this there's nothing to do with this at all but someone said that we're that by the end of the week, by the by the weekend, West Ham may well have signed a player. We're very close to signing a player. Believe you know, believe what you will. I I, I don't know. Um, so I do think it's I do think it's a bit of a weird one. But this ain't a great article. This does not reflect well on 
on anyone, really, does it? I mean, we can't get this director of football in or the person that's going to do the negotiating quickly enough, as far as I'm concerned. As far as the differing day thing is concerned, I... Yeah, look, he's got a reputation for it. I told you, I went camping, I was I sat next to... Um, um, met somebody called Chris, who was, who was an Everton fan, and he was telling me all about about David Moyes and he likes to, he does dither a bit, but he likes to do a late deal. And I, I get all that. I, not, I disbelieve it, but it doesn't make it any more comfortable to sit through a transfer window. But the differing Dave thing, you'd think, you'd like to think it's been, it's been sorted by now because he's been at the club long enough. You'd like to believe that he has a list of five or six targets and we're already trying to get them and it's not this late. I, I would be seriously worried. I'll tell you what I don't like about this Uremchuk one. Uh, David Moyes clearly wanted a striker six months ago. He saved his money, saved it for this summer. I would worry, it's not dithering Dave, I'd be worried about indecisive Dave if he didn't already know his number one, two and three choice strikers. It wouldn't be great if he had these choice strikers and he gets to the Euros and, oh, oh, actually, he's quite good. But you think, oh, hold on a second, mate, that's, that's not... That's not planning because you want the planning to be in place, don't you? You want the planning to be there. This is not about planning, though. This is about us identifying a player, regardless of whether you think he's good, bad or indifferent. This is about us identifying a player, being in for a player and not being able to seal the deal. Which sort of takes you back to that old... Uh, the the William Carvalho thing, if you remember, when it was Sporting Lisbon, wasn't it? Uh, when when they were critical of, of the way West Ham were doing business and the way David Sullivan was was closing the deal. And, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was, there was a, I think it was a fax. Was it not a fax or something or an email that was sent over? I don't know. But he said it, was, it wasn't a very... They didn't feel it was very professional and it didn't meet the asking price. And Gio gave the example very recently of, of Ben White at Arsenal, Ben White to Arsenal. And he said that, who was it? Brighton had just said he's 50 million. There's no negotiations, 50 million. That's just what he costs. And I don't know. I get, look, we're not Arsenal fans. We don't know. We don't watch, uh, we don't watch the Arsenal news, do we, all the time and watch every Arsenal video? Well, maybe you do, but you didn't get the impression that Arsenal went in and bid 37, then 38, then 38.5 and get up to 50 million. You sort of get the impression they, I don't know, maybe they bid 40 million, they asked the price, they were told, turn around, said, no, it's 50, and in the end, they just said, okay, right, here's 50. Clearly, you negotiate some terms and what what percentage is paid when and, you know, are there, whatever, clauses for qualifying for Europe or whatever, I don't know. I, I don't know the, the, the exact construct of the deal there, but they didn't dilly-dally, did they? They just got the deal done. And I hope we're not, I hope we're not penny pinching. I, I, I really do. And as I say, if this... I don't mind missing out on this player. Um, I'm sort of a little bit disappointed to find we were in for him, you know? I, I didn't think he was all that at all. I've seen... I've seen 10 strikers better than this bloke. He, he's, I've, I saw many, there were many strikers better in the Euros than this guy. Um, this is not the person we need. But I don't think it bodes well. And you've only got to look at the, the response to the article, which is... Probably the biggest response to any article. I said this month. I said this month. The month's just started. This month, last month, whatever. Um, it's massive. People are annoyed about this, and people are annoyed about it because people are worried. And and that's it. As I say, I'm, I'm mindful about predicting doom and gloom for West Ham because for the reasons that I said, that it's. I don't want to do it. It'd be like th three seasons in a row in, in that sense, and. Um, you know, we, we, we might we might be all right and, and we, we may well sign some good players and some decent players. Hopefully we do. But but I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of faith, actually. Um and I think the reason I'm not is it's just me guarding myself so I don't look particularly silly yet. And and giving giving the transfer window a fair time. I'd rather it don't go down to last day, but you know what? If we win our first couple of games um we got off to a good start in europe and then on transfer deadline day we make three signings it'll be <gasps> okay i mean what are you doing well don't put me through this but you would turn around and you'd say okay okay fair enough right let's get to the season um and get it done um 
But I'd rather not go through that. I'd rather the deal's got done now. I, I think it's a gamble leaving things until really late in the transfer um, window there. I also, there's one other thing as well, which I was discussing uh, with the... Uh, had some friends around some on Saturday, which you'll uh, if you'd have uh, if you'd seen our Patreon video of, of of me and my friends getting drunk in in the lounge, of course, um, you'd have known. Look, I spoke to uh, Alan about that, and I thought uh, Moyes likes players to acclimatise. Apart from Jesse Lingard, as 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 Alan said, Jesse Lingard as far Jesse Lingard came out and played bang straight in straight in the team, but but by and large. Moyes does like players to acclimatise a little bit. He gives his excuses, doesn't he? With Brem Rama and Bowen being two cases in point, saying, oh, they're not ready yet, they need to be training for a little bit. What we don't want to do is get have a month of the season gone, and then Moyes is saying, oh, well, they, they need another two, three weeks to get ready. This is the time, this is pre-season, we should have the signings done so they can get ready now. Simple as that, really. Anyway, look, look, a little bit of a rant. I just thought very, very, very odd. Very odd article. Really... Um, yeah, a bit, a bit worrying, a little bit concerning. I, I was going to say, let me know what you think. I think I know what you think. I don't think you need to let me know in the, in the comments below. I think I get it. I think I know what most people are going to say. I think they'll be the, saying the same thing that they're saying on Claret and Hugh there, which is, why are we differing? Why are we stalling? Why can't we seem to sign any players? Um, it ain't great. It ain't a great look. And the longer it goes on, the worse it gets. And I'm not saying... Just sign a player, any player. The, the, here's, here's an, here's, sorry, I was just about to finish. And here's another point which, which I'm, I'm mindful of. I have seen so many times fans getting excited, not getting excited, fans getting disgusted with West Ham for not signing a player that wasn't any good. Um, I say any, any good. Uh, do you know what I mean? Sometimes we get linked with a player that no one's heard of. Um, I'm struggling to think of one now right off the top of my head, but you you know you know what I mean. And then we don't sign him. Oh, you know we really should have got that player, and we were, you know we should have nailed that. And we, hold on a second, he's not. Um, it's not Bako. We should have got back at that time. That was a thing to miss out on when we were in for Lacazette. We missed out on him. That was a, a bad player to miss out on. But sometimes there's journeyman players who ain't all that, and we miss out on them, and people go a, a bit mad about it. So I, I would put this one in this bracket. Don't matter. Don't matter. But it ain't always going to be Roman Yeremchuk that we miss out on at some point. And here's the point here. If we use these Roman Yeremchuk tactics to sign Pereira, who's openly said, come and get me, come and get me, I'm here, come and sign me. I'm not saying he's necessarily sent to West Ham. If we go in now and start divvering and start saying, oh, OK, well, we'll, we'll give you a little bit now, we'll give it to you next season, someone will just come in, plonk the money on the table, go, there you go, and then we'll be scratching around. And you don't want to get... And see what the, what the board needs to make some signings. What the board don't want to do is get to the end of the, end of the transfer window and then turn around and say, ah, oh, well, we tried. 